Right now is a critical time. With everything that could be looming ahead, what do we need to focus on now? Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back to the channel. It's time to double down and get serious about our preps, friends. Although it may still feel like the lazy days of summer, we really need to look ahead and get prepared. Multiple hotspots around the globe could explode at any moment. The next few months right here at home have many prepared for turmoil, and we need to heighten our level of readiness for natural disasters as we head into hurricane season, harsh winter weather, or whatever other natural threats you may face in your area. Now is the time. Prepping is about being ready long before a crisis is staring us in the face. Here are the five areas that we're focusing on right now. Number one, medical needs. Do you have a backup supply of your daily medications? Prescription drug shortages have reached unprecedented levels in recent years. Active drug shortages in the U.S. reached an all-time high during the first quarter of 2024. Many of us rely on prescription medications to stay healthy, physically, emotionally, and mentally. And for some, having their daily medications could be a matter of life and death. Even just a small blip in the supply chain could mean an interruption in your medication supply, and it could easily be far worse than that. The first step to take is having a backup supply of any medications that you rely on on a daily basis, as well as an emergency supply of meds that might not be needed every day, but just on a true emergency rescue basis, such as antibiotics for infections, EpiPens for severe allergic reactions, and protocol medications for severe illnesses. All of these can be difficult to get and many are often in short supply. In the past, people resorted to many not so great ways of getting some of these medications, but luckily now, we have more and safer options available to us than were ever available before. There are companies out there who specialize in supplying these medications from real U.S. pharmacies through real U.S. doctors, specifically for backup and emergency use. It's as simple as answering a few quick questions and you can get a whole lot of peace of mind. I'll put a few companies that we've personally used down below so that you can check them out. And if you have experience with them or other similar companies, you can put that down in the comments as well. No one in our home takes daily prescriptions, but we felt a lot better knowing that we had emergency antibiotics taken care of. And next on our list is adding some of those other emergency rescue meds. A second step to take in the medical area is researching and gathering natural and holistic alternatives to those medications. For example, oregano for its strong antibiotic properties and mullein for its effectiveness against respiratory illnesses. Just like with all areas of preparedness, it's wise to have multiple options for accomplishing every goal. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. I fully believe it's best to avoid pharmaceuticals when you can, but there's times when that might be the only effective option or the last line of defense. So don't plan to rely on only natural solutions. On the flip side, a stockpile of pharmaceuticals can only go so far if you can't replenish them. So it's equally vital to have natural, holistic, and usually more sustainable options in your toolkit. Lastly, don't forget to prep for any medical devices that you might rely on. If you or a family member relies on a device that relies on electricity, or if a medication that you need to take requires refrigeration, it's important to include backup power in your urgent planning. A portable power station with solar panels to keep it charged is a must for you. I will link a few sites below where you can check them out and determine the size that you need to keep your equipment running. The second area we need to focus on right now is our long-term food supply with a focus on proteins and staples. We got our first real taste of shortages starting in 2020 and things have never been quite the same since. It was a grim reminder of how fragile our supply chain really is and how easily it can crumble. More recently, other factors have affected our food supply and prices. Global conflicts in Ukraine and other theaters has been a significant contributor. We've also noticed more and more significant weather disruptions from flooding to drought to unprecedented and unseasonal cold snaps that decimate crops. Things like avian flu, rising feed costs, and mass casualties to livestock are affecting both the supply and the cost of important staple foods like eggs, chicken, beef, milk, and butter. It's clear to more people than ever before why having some sort of a food stockpile is imperative, but we need to also take into account what kind of food we're storing. Canned Spam, soups, and chili are great to carry you easily through a short-term power outage, but for a longer-term scenario, we need healthier options, and we need basic staple foods that can form the base of a real diet rather than an emergency diet. 
Building a stockpile including wheat, rice, powdered eggs, powdered milk, and butter, as well as nutritious freeze-dried meats and veggies will take you a lot further than high sodium canned goods. Although I truly believe that each has its place in our food storage. When buying grains, look for whole grains for the best nutrition and the longest shelf life, but don't forget a grinder to make flours and meals from the whole grains that you store. I'll put our favorite source for non-GMO whole grains and bulk dry goods down below if you need a place to start. When it comes to proteins, dairy, fruits, and vegetables, freeze-dried is the way to go. Freeze-dried is the gold standard for food storage because it has the longest possible shelf life. Most freeze-dried items will last with full quality and nutrition for 25 to 30 years if they're sealed in a can. They're also tops in nutrition because the freeze-drying process preserves almost 100% of the nutrition in the food. Compared to methods like canning and dehydrating, which use higher heat and destroy a lot more nutrients. The quality and texture of freeze-dried foods are also better for those same reasons. Another benefit of freeze-dried foods, even once opened, they remain shelf stable for about a year. So even if you can't use the whole container that you open right away, it doesn't need refrigeration. So you can use as much or as little as you need at a time without worrying about the unused portion going bad if the power's out. If you're new to freeze-dried food or you just maybe want to learn a little bit more about it and how to use it, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll tell you something exciting coming up where you can do just that. Like with our grains and our dry goods, for our freeze-dried foods, we also choose a company with high quality standards that does not allow genetically modified foods in or artificial preservatives or anything else along those lines in their foods. This week we are doing a big giant stock up on these freeze-dried foods because there's a huge back to school sale going on so it's the best time to really bulk up our pantry for a lot less money. Any penny saved is a penny that we can invest in more preps and that's the name of the game. They are having big huge discounts on a lot of the foods that I've been talking about right now that should be staples in our prepper pantries. 25 to 50 percent off of freeze-dried eggs, chicken, beef, milk, and all different kinds of fruits and vegetables, many of which you couldn't really even have in your prepper pantry any other way. So I'll put down below the direct link to that sale and how you can save the most money if you wanna check it out and add the best possible freeze-dried food to your food storage. Remember that food you purchase now is an investment in the future. If you've been prepping for very long, you know what I'm talking about. Food you purchased a few years ago and you're consuming now, knowing you paid much less for it than you would have today. Food prices are not going to go down, unfortunately. They're gonna to continue to rise, so any extra food you can stockpile today is gonna to pay you back in spades down the road. As long as you're smart about it, have a plan, stock up on food with a long shelf life, and make sure to stay organized and rotate through your stockpile, your food will never lose its value. How many other investments can we say that about confidently? The third thing we're focusing on right now is fuel. Fuel is a tricky thing to store, but it can be so important, especially for short and medium term situations. Look at what your fuel needs are. If you have a vehicle, or especially if you have a gas generator, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have some fuel stored for those. Make sure to use a fuel stabilizer for any fuel that you're storing. Make sure you take safety into consideration when choosing the containers and location. And just like any other preps, rotate through your stored fuel to avoid any waste. What other types of fuel do you need for your emergency gear? Do you have a heater that runs on propane, for instance, or a camp stove or oven? Do you have a grill that you could use to do some cooking outdoors and an extended power outage? Propane is one of the easier and safer fuels to store, so if you have the need and the space, get a few extra grill tanks. Stock up on canisters for more portable use and make sure you have any adapter hoses that you need for your gear and that they're in good shape. A leaky hose is not something you want to be dealing with in a crisis and it can be very dangerous. Trust me, I know this from experience. Do you have a butane burner or any other appliance that you should store butane for? Butane is another fuel that is comparatively safe and easy to store. Chafing fuel can be used in a lot of different ways for heating and cooking. And if you have some alcohol, either denatured alcohol or a higher concentrated rubbing alcohol, that can be used as a fuel as well in a whole host of makeshift burners and stoves. Do you have any lamps or anything else that burns kerosene or lamp oil? Make sure to stock up on those as well. Stock up on fuel to the best of your ability to do it safely based on your needs, your living situation, and your budget. If some of those factors limit you, think of alternatives such as a bike or an e-bike for transportation and a solar power station to replace much of the capacity of a gas generator. A power station of sufficient size can even run some cooking and heating or cooling appliances if necessary. 
The next area to focus on right now is food preservation. Do you have what you need to save your refrigerated and frozen food if the power were to go out for an extended time? Canning jars, simple stovetop canners, and a propane burner or two could save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars in lost food and preserve that food to feed you longer if the crisis stretched on. A generator or a power station can buy you some time, but in a medium to long-term event, that's not going to last forever. Simple canning can even be done over a wood fire if necessary. In addition to saving your perishable frozen food, canning can also be used often to divide up a larger container of food into smaller portions once it's opened, which can be an issue in a grid down situation. If you're able to grow or forage food for yourself, it'll be important to be able to preserve a larger harvest. This is the time of year when these items are in stores because it is canning season. Some other items to have on hand for food preservation include plenty of salt, additive free salt is best, and 5% acidity vinegar. You might also want to have dehydrating screens or racks and oxygen absorbers for sealing up portions of dry goods as you break into your bulk containers. <laughs> the fifth and final thing to think about this week is planning. Prep your plan. Do you have plans in place for various situations? Do your family members and other significant members of your circle know those plans? Talk about and write down significant details, addresses, meeting places, phone numbers, and anything else you might need. Under what circumstances might you bug out or evacuate your home? Where would you go? If part of your plan might include going to someone else's home or property, make sure you've checked that with them. What if the unthinkable happens when not everyone is at home? What are your plans for different situations? Partners might be at work or running errands. Kids might be at school. Remember, communication may not be functioning normally. Talk about plans of action. Who would move? Who stays put? Think about meeting places and communication relays. Part of planning includes making lists. What items do you need to grab in case of evacuation? Prioritize those items in order of what you would grab first, depending on time or space constraints. Have important documents or copies of them at least ready and available. Do you have pets or livestock? Think about those plans. Who will you bring with you and how? What hotels, shelters, campgrounds, or public lands allow pets? It's impossible to plan for every variable, but it's still important to do what we can. Remember, we're always just one small crisis away from big trouble, but what you do today can have a big impact on the outcome for yourself and your loved ones. So be smart, be safe, and be prepared. If you want to learn more about freeze-dried food, all the benefits of it, and how to use it, you might be in luck. We're going to be attending a couple of events next month in September that are all about freeze-dried food. These are free events. They include a free lunch. There's going to be demonstrations with the food and free giveaways and just an all around good time. We did two of these events earlier this year and we had a blast. These next two events are going to be in American Fork, Utah and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So if you are anywhere near either of those areas, we would love to meet you at these events. I'll put the details down below for you to check out and you can also text me for more info. If you're not near those areas or going to be near those areas and you can't make it to the events but you still want to learn about using freeze-dried food hands-on, check below and I will link some kits that are kind of like HelloFresh for freeze-dried food. You get a box with a bunch of different foods and a bunch of recipes and you can make all the recipes with the food in the kit. So it's kind of like a hands-on lesson to using freeze-dried food. Those kits are really awesome. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me one of these down in the comments. Don't forget to check below the video for some important links, discounts, and info. And check out this video next for some more prepping information. I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.